Welcome to Sebring, everybody. We are in Florida for this beautiful sunset. Psych, it's nighttime for this race. Let's go. Ooh, yeah, that looks bad. This spy, oh my god, I watch her rejoin, watch her rejoin. Oh no, oh no. What the fuck? This was our first race of the week, and coming across the line for our final qualifying lap, it was pretty abysmal, 203.96. That is good enough, or should I say bad enough, for P15 on the grid. So, yeah, starting way at the bottom, the guys at the top in the 201s, which is absurd. That's a GT3 time. We are in the Porsche Cup, by the way, and uh, just to repeat myself, this is Sebring. Our launch actually wasn't too bad. There is somebody on our right. You can see there's also somebody on our left, and we break early, so all man of things just not going um, optimally it's not nothing is really it's not horrible we have lost three positions and we do have somebody on our outside as we go into what is this turn like three four and five something like that uh, gonna end up settling behind him so four positions down as 11 I mean everybody's kind of having to break everybody's going very slow through there and uh, we're cautious enough to survive Number six and number 11 side by side ahead of us. We are down now into P19. They're gonna make contact. He kind of shoulders him out of the way. We slow down, stay behind six, thinking we are just gonna take the inside up here. The guy in front of six, I'm not sure what happens. They kind of bottleneck. He makes contact. We end up making contact with him because of that sudden, uh, sudden speed difference. We spin him around, but we do kind of knock him back on track. So he doesn't actually lose much there. This is a couple of cars ahead. These guys come around the, uh, the hairpin and they're trying to go too wide through that little section. You definitely can. In this instance, it's not going to work out for them. So we'll pick up two positions there, uh, plus that position from number six. So we've uh, lost four positions. Then we gained three. That's going to net us into P16. 11 making a beautiful move up the inside, breaking late and diving up. What is that? Car number 10's uh, inside into that corner, which I believe is corner 10. I think that's what that is. Another car off on the side. Uh, that's going to put us into P15. So we are back to our starting position. Yippee! And um, car number 10 taking a narrow line into there as if I were going to attack. The car ahead of him, the Rexy car, goes super deep. We slow down for both of them, and this really, really kills our run. The car behind had, had a decent gap going into that, so he's able to take full advantage. He basically takes the racing line, pulls to the inside. By the end of the straight, we're going to give that one up through sunset. We're on the outside, and I don't want to fight anything too much right now. The guys ahead having a little bit of elbows out moments. Rexy has made his way up the pack even more, so... We are sitting now in P16, crossing the line. So overall, first lap netting negative one positions. As we come into turn one to start lap two, we're going to take a pretty conservative line here. And number six, who's actually kind of been sitting behind us, we're going to let him through. This is the guy we accidentally spun in the beginning. So I kind of wanted to give his position back to him, following him through and hoping that maybe he can fight through the pack and we can do some following. We are down into P17 at this point, but this was literally my first race of the week. And I hadn't really practiced at Sebring at all. So I was pretty ecstatic that I was able to hold some sort of pace and uh, hoping that my pace would get better through the week, but really just relying on people to make mistakes and gain free positions, hopefully ending up in the top 10 or at least the top half. I think there's 24 cars in this race total. So that would be P12 would be halfway up the grid, which we should net positive uh, I rating wise, if that were the case, going a bit wide there. And um, over the course of the next uh, lap or so, we kind of try and sit back a little bit as we're not super comfortable on this track. Car number 10 looking up the inside of 18. It's not going to work out for him. Or maybe that was 18 looking up the inside of 10. Nope, I uh, had it right the first time. Anyway, car number six uh, goes up the inside. We're going to follow him through and actually push him down the straight. Try and work together to solidify this position. Position Sounded like a beatboxer right there. Uh, we are following him up the inside into sunset. We actually go super tight here. He goes a little bit deep and car number 18 out there also goes deep. And look at this. They're all behind us now. We just uh, scooped around a tight line of sunset and all three of them go wide. And this, this was definitely um, something that happens in the beginning of the week. When C whenever Sebring comes up is people really struggling around sunset, especially at the beginning of the week. It's a very strange corner, always has been. Multiple lines through there. In this uh, scenario, we're going to gain three positions there. So we are up now into P14. So we're actually netting positive by one position, but you can see um, they're all right behind us. 18 looking to make a move up the inside. We're gonna go too wide into turn three four and five i think he finally decides to kind of back out a little bit here and we get a, a little bit of a better run than him so we're gonna hold our position as p14 the gap ahead pretty ginormous i'm not 
honestly, I don't even think I can hold these people behind me. I know that uh, I'm not comfortable. Six, immediately gonna send up the inside. 10, doing the same thing. I'm just trying to survive out here. We make small amount of contact, but it's a zero times. Nobody gets any sort of penalty for that. We are going to, I believe we tuck behind 10 or maybe he tucks in front of us, or maybe neither of those happen. And we go side by side into turn 10 with um, him on the inside, obviously, me on the outside. However, this turns into the inside for the next corner. So still kind of side by side. And he's going to have the inside for the next corner. So we're settling behind him at this point, going too wide into this corner. Even if you make it work perfectly, you both lose a ton of time. So never, basically never worth it unless it's last lap and you're fighting for position. Car number 18, by the time we come into Sunset, takes a uh, much wider entry to Sunset, which is going to give him a pretty good exit. We're still ahead, but he's got a really good run on us. And he's going to switch to our inside as soon as we start moving across to take the racing line. Not feeling uh, super confident about defending this, but we're going to try it anyways. Going side by side, we make a little bit of contact on exit, but we manage to hold our car on the track. And taking a look at his perspective of that, you can see we just about not really allowing him any room there. We do make a little bit of contact, but honestly, I feel like um, that was slightly unavoidable contact uh, on my end. I think he powered out slightly too early. And honestly, if he had powered a little bit later, he might have been able to hold the inside and go side by side with me into three, four, five. Luckily, we didn't because it allowed me to stay on to these guys. That little bit of oversteer right there on the exit is going to put me under some pressure, though, which I'm going to fold immediately, uh, fold under immediately. So going super wide into turn 13, I want to say I, turn. I want to say that's turn 13 side by side, heading into the sweeping right that basically leads on to the straight. There's like I guess a chicane, you could call it. I'm not sure. There's another left right here, but we we're going to settle behind car number 10. So finally down back into P17, I think we are in at the moment. Our laps are atrocious. Uh, I haven't really been pinpointing it, but watching this replay back, there are so many things I was doing wrong. I should not be going into second for this corner. Uh, at this point, there's somebody right on our tail, so we're about to be under fire for moving down into P18. None of this is really where I want to be. So I'm just kind of trying to ignore the fact that I am way further back than I would like to be or that I feel like I usually find myself and um, just use it as a practice session. We did go super wide there into turn seven, the big hairpin, but luckily eight got oversteer on the exit and then he's going to start flashing us. And this is going to be a theme of this track, um, if not just this race. You can see the flashing continuing. And I feel like in a, in a different time in my life, that would have bothered me. But for whatever reason, this I, I was so unfazed by this. Um, I actually, it was it was fun to, I, I haven't, I don't really race at night that much. And I don't really see people flashing their headlights. So it was actually kind of enjoyable to see somebody flashing their headlights like that at me. It gave me like, um, just good vibes, honestly. It was giving me good vibes vibes. It, it wasn't giving me like aggressive vibes or the vibes that he was trying to throw us off. It just kind of felt goofy. Uh, this car number, I think that was car number 18 right there, going super wide into the hairpin. We're going to slip past and pause. Can anybody guess why I paused it? Joey, if you watch, you know Joey. Joey has gone off and uh, we're going to pick up that position. So this is what happened to him. A car who has the same livery as car number 18, who just went deep into the hairpin for us, is also going to go. I mean, honestly, he doesn't really go deep. He just gets on the power really early and just pushes Joey completely off the track. And then he bottoms out his car. Everybody say bye, Joey. Bye. bye, Joey. Car number 10, putting us under pressure at this point. We move to the inside. We are one position up, so we're into, oh, actually two at the moment. So we're up into P15, and we're able to successfully defend against car number 10. He's going to stay pretty hot on our tail, though. We are able to take the racing line here. He actually takes, like, a slightly narrow line there, and that's going to allow us to have a better exit relative to him. And by the end of this lap, this is coming out of sunset. You can see the gap behind has grown significantly as the cars behind one of which is the hash slinging flasher is uh, chasing him down and pulling him into a battle. So the gap behind will continue to grow. Our laps are down slightly. We're running a mid 204s at this point, which is better, but still pretty far off the pace. The guys at the front are running low 203s in race or a uh, high 202s. And we're just going to do all we can to get through here without really knowing how to do it correctly. We shouldn't have gone into second there um, at pace. You're not going into second there. I do notice coming into turn seven that there's a group, I'm not sure why, but they've fallen back significantly and it feels like they're continuing to fall back and kind of congeal, if that word fits the scenario correctly in the way that it does in my head. And 
hoping that that will allow us to catch up. We only have a few laps left at this point. I think we have five laps left. So we are running out of time. Um, really looking for a fight up ahead. And as we come around into turn seven, a couple of laps later, car number 14, car number 20, and car number 18, one, two, three, they are about to head into turn seven. 18 tries to break later. 14 actually breaks early, sends 18 up the middle involuntarily, taking out all three of them and then turning into the side of car number 14, as I, I guess he thought he wasn't there, but pretty aggressive. I feel like if, if the, uh, the initial impact didn't cause damage, that second one probably did. And um, we're going to sweep all three of those. The flasher behind us, or I guess he's behind the car behind us. He is flashing away in excitement. Happy for him and happy for me. We all gained three positions. We are now up into P12 with three laps left, including this one. So two full laps and just, uh, just about a couple of corners left in this one. The gap ahead is absolutely gargantuan. I have zero hopes or expectations of gaining that position. This is the flasher behind us as he crosses onto the last lap. He's going to cut into the inside of car number 10, um, break pretty nicely, and he's going to slide right up the middle as he claims that position and then slides out. 10's going to make contact. Look who's coming through here. It's freaking Joey. He's uh, following car number, I think that's car number 12 ahead of him as they both gain two positions on the last lap. Car 10 just about getting pit maneuvered by 8, who has essentially, although albeit on accident, caused all of this tragedy for both of these cars. And I feel like I can speak flash now because that was a flash of sadness. I'm damn near certain. Um, they both go pretty wide on the hairpin after that. Joey and car number 12 are pulling away, but uh, these guys are basically going to be separated for the rest of the race. So everybody's kind of tucked into their final positions. This is our POV as we cross the cross, uh, go, go through sunset for the final time and crossing the finish line in P12 all the way down from, I think we were at uh, P17 or P18 at one point in that race. Pretty happy about that comeback. Look who's right behind us. It's Joey. Hello, Joey. And here are the results for that one. We yep, ended up in P12, gaining both safety rating and a little bit of I rating, which is perfect. We were just on the cusp. Pretty terrible lap times. Definitely looking to get that up. Um, but I wasn't, I was, honestly, I was thinking, oh, I'm just, I'm going to go over a couple of laps or a couple more races and I'll just learn, right? <sighs> no, I wasn't. I was not learning. I was getting bad. I was just, I was losing everything. So we did what everybody does every single night and we went to sleep, woke up the next day and did some practice. Uh, this is our first race and I'm gonna show you the entire qualifying lap, first race of the next day. Breaking right as the wall kind of leaves you for the second time on that side, getting on the throttle right before that cone that's hanging on that fence comes through, breaking at the first set of cones, pretty heavily here and then trailing in you actually turn in pretty early here you want to ride both of these curbs keep the, the uh, throttle up as high as you can uh, once again turning in a little early you don't have to hit that curb in this instance I do uh, you're really just braking there to kind of get the weight thrown around you don't want to slow down the car too much you can take it pretty quickly as we approach turn seven really big braking zone starting to break just before the tarmac changes reaching peak pressure before the four cones trailing off at the end letting the car kind of oversteer itself around that corner and straightening out my wheel as soon as I get the power down to keep the car heading the direction I want to and building up the throttle as early as I possibly can. Hugging the outside as we come into turn 10, braking just before the four cones reaching peak pressure after them down to second. Really, really weird trail braking moment there. You're still super heavily on the brakes while you're while you begin to turn. Very, very tricky uh, section right there. Turn 13, I think this is braking before these cones. Not huge uh, braking, uh, just enough to get the car turned in and meet the, but the apex and then ride out to that exit curb. You want to get on the throttle pretty early there. Flat out all of the way through here. Um, keeping, we don't want to push all the way wide there because we want to be close on the outside to this corner down to third gear. Very quick trail braking off. Build up the throttle as much as you can. Brake at the end of this curb lighter than you would think. Third gear and get it turned in. Throttle before you get onto the curb and uh, get full throttle as quickly as you can. Be careful. It's super easy to slide out on top of that curb or uh, put a couple of tires in the dirt, which will then force you to slide out. Let's take a breather. It's beautiful. Okay, now braking right after the three cones into sunset down to third gear, starting at about 55% brake pressure. Uh, really quickly starting to trail that off and braking super lightly until you start building up throttle at the first apex kind of treat it like a giant double apex throttle all the way around and that will be a lap which will uh, be a 203.08 which would be good enough for p2 in our uh, first race of the day as car number nine david up ahead maxim behind us maxim 
uh, Maxine, definitely Maxine, behind us. Um, he's going to launch ahead of us immediately. So he was behind us for a total of maybe a second or a half, a second and a half, somewhere around there. Surrounded by pink cars at the moment, both behind and in front of me, just about going three wide. They managed to make it to the outside ahead of both of the cars behind me, tucking to the inside for a semi-defensive line. And car 21, who is in P4 at the moment, sends it up the inside, off track, gets kind of pushed, but he did go very deep. <laughs> causes like an absolute truckload of mayhem takes out probably seven or eight drivers uh through turns three four and five that's us it's hard to see because of the lights um but yes we made it through there successfully so riding in p3 and the guy currently in p4 looking to take advantage of my terrible terrible run through turn seven uh just about going side by side as we head towards turn 10 where the inside is heavily favored and um, we're going to cut across to the inside to attempt to defend it. I'm not sure what was going on in my brain here. We go extremely deep, and he just slides through there for free. So down to P4, uh, losing two positions already halfway through the first lap. There is a train queued up behind us. Fortunately, they're too wide momentarily and just long enough to allow us for a better exit. So we're really getting on the throttle as early as we can. They're already the leaders are way up the road as we went wide through a couple of corners, losing a a lot of time to really nobody but ourselves and uh, coming around to finish this lap out cleanly or at least finish uh, the run onto the straight cleanly those are the cars behind everybody's already pretty spread out 7 11 and 8 are it looks like they're about to go kind of have like a little battle into sunset and sure enough somebody's going to go flying through there the pink car into the wall everybody else gets through cleanly and we have lost a good bit of time already so i'd say we're about a second probably about a second maybe 0.7 seconds behind p3 and the leaders it looks like they are pretty close to each other hoping that they will fight and me and p3 can run some clean laps maybe catch up to them eventually and as it turns out p3 definitely is closing that gap uh the gap between him and myself opening up unfortunately for me or, or not really unfortunate but i guess it's more just a lack of practice on my part uh, I did set a 202.87, which was my fastest lap at this point, and I was pretty proud of that. P3 sending it up the inside, up ahead of P2, and they're going to go side by side all of the way through the first corner. As they head into corner three, he's going to, it looks like he's going to back out at first, and sure enough, he does. P2 swiping across there and maintaining P2 beautifully, although the gap to the leader is falling away slowly. But I would say the chance, chances of these guys working together, at least in this order, are zero. As this guy, the guy in P3, was looking to make a move constantly on P2, and P2, sure enough, runs straight over the curb. I believe that gives him, if not a slowdown, uh, some uh, definitely an off track. We managed to really not gain any time, even though they were fighting all of the way through there. We basically gain no time and they just now they're just going to pull away from us in reverse order so we haven't moved at all and honestly we didn't really move at all this entire race there is our laps over the course of the race they were fairly consistent around mid to high 203s some low 204s and we would cross the line here in p4 not the most exciting race, uh, but we did put in quite a bit of practice, so I was really happy about just driving a consistent, clean uh, race at such a high level. Our 2028 that we set sadly didn't count as uh, I think we had an off track, so uh, that would have been the fastest lap of the race, but turns out that it wasn't, and uh, the rest of my laps weren't that quick, so consistently I was pretty slow. If you enjoyed this, check out one of my other videos, and please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time.